Good evening, everybody, and thank you again um, for welcoming. We're welcoming you to the last and final series of the Northbridge Wellness Webinar Series. Um, and we I hope that you've enjoyed the last three months with us. It's been a variety of different ways for you to focus on yourself during these very trying last 16 months. And those of us um, of Northbridge realize better than ever, you know, better than many and many of you who are caregivers and um, going through this for the first time that we've got to take care of ourselves. Um, and that's what we hope this series has taught you that you've got to, during crisis, during difficult, challenging times, stop, reflect, Think about yourself, whether it's through yoga, whether it's through meditation, um, but whether it's playing a game of tennis, going for a long walk. And tonight, we're going to hear from one of our own culinary directors um, about the MIND diet. And she will also be doing a cooking demonstration for us. Um, and again, we are passionate about our, our food at Northbridge. Um, we're passionate about um, nutrition for our residents and for our associates it's for our associates to stay well, live life, and love life. So, uh, without further ado, I want to introduce Alina Eisenhower, who, um, like I said, um, she is one of our culinary directors. But uh, there's so much more to Alina. Alina has made her career owning and operating bakeries and restaurants. Um, she has appeared numerous times on the Food Network and has been featured chef at the prestigious James Beard Foundation. Alina's philosophy as a chef is that recipes should be, recipes should be delicious by design and healthy by default, which I love that saying. All of her dishes are meant to be pleasing to the eyes as well as rich in flavors and textures. What uh, drew Alina to a career in senior living, specifically memory care, lies a little closer to her heart. Alina's grandmother suffered with dementia and spent the last 30 years of her life in an assisted living community. It's, it is what, uh, it is the driving, why she, um, excuse me, it is, um, while Alina was visiting her grandmother that Alina saw just how important mealtime was to the residents and that it was often the highlight of their day. She always felt that the food could be better, fresher and more nutritious. It was this desire to, to prepare the best foods and Northbridge's Eat Fresh, Eat Local signature program that drew Alina to share her talents with the residents of Avita of Needham. So Alina, welcome. And we are thrilled that you are joining us in the wellness series. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and happy to share this. Um, I really started, in all honesty, um, learning more about the MIND diet and becoming really interested in it when I started at Avita a little bit over a year ago, because I've always been interested in nutrition and have understood and really believe that nutrition, food is medicine, and that it has so much to do with overall our bodies and everybody always thinks about, I think it's funny that we all think about with aging, we worry about diets for heart health and diets for weight maintenance and diets for diabetes and diets for sodium. And no one talks about diets for your brain, which probably should be first and foremost because your brain controls everything else. So, and um, the mind diet really is a diet for your entire body. It's based off of the um, Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet um, together and um, combines those two, which both diets are um, often used uh, for longevity and um, thought to be part of the blue zone, which is another thing people talk about right now is countries that naturally eat that way that tend to have people that have the um, greatest longevity and um, fullest riches life for the longest amount of time. Mm -hmm. So really one of the other things that's so great about the MIND diet is unlike other diets where all you're worried about is what you cannot eat and all the things you should avoid, the MIND diet is so much more about what you need to have in your diet and when you're adding to it. Sure, a little bit, there's things we wanna avoid, but really it's so much about focusing on the things that we need to include in our diet. And those things really are um, berries, especially red berries, red and blue. So blueberries, uh, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, cranberries, 
um, leafy green vegetables, nuts, um, nuts and seeds, red wine, yay for red wine, <laughs> um, good fats. So olive oil, omega-3s are really important. So fish, fatty fish is very important. Salmon, mackerel, uh, albacore tuna, sardines, if you like sardines, and then whole grains, um, brown rice, whole grain bread, quinoa, things like that. The things that you limit, um, red meat and um, sweets, like overly processed sugar. You can still have sweets and there's lots of ways to creatively still get them in there using natural sugars and using sugars that are a lower glycemic index and less of a stress on your body. And obviously then um, fried foods and um, things like butter and high fat dairy. Really all of these foods are, this diet is very similar to any anti-inflammation diet because inflammation is bad for almost your entire body and especially your brain and leads to uh, more rapid deterioration. The thing about the mind diet is that it's not, doesn't reverse anything. It doesn't change if you already have dementia, it's not gonna reverse it. But what it is gonna do is if you are genetically prone to it, all of us are prone to you know, some sort of declining cognitive ability as we get older, it prevents it and slows it. And um, really to a pretty great degree, as you can see from the Mind Diet study there, people that followed it strictly up to 54%, that's pretty amazing. And even people that loosely follow it, you know, 35%, that's a pretty big difference for just adding some, eating more fresh fruits and vegetables and adding more fish to your diet. That's so like, very, yeah. that's staggering. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. And, and what it is, is it's what is, it's really um, largely about, it's about omega-3s, which is what's in your, your fish, also in nuts, which is why nuts are in the diet. The thing about nuts is though, is they only contain um, one component that then your body turns in to the other. So you have to eat, which is why this is about eating a balanced diet and eating all of these things. Fish is a really complete source, but most people aren't gonna eat fish, fatty fish every day. So by also having nuts in your diet and the dark leafy greens and the um, berries, you're going to, each of them contain some of the same components. So when you have them all together, then you're gonna you know, hit those numbers. Um, yeah, and it is pretty amazing. And what it does is it, it um, prevents the, they, when they did the studies, they literally looked at people's, the size of people's brains in some of these studies. And it kept them from shrinking because as you age and it deteriorates, you lose tissue and this keeps you from losing tissue hmm. um, and helps your brain, just like everything else, your body repair itself better as you're eating. So it's pretty amazing. Um, we can go on to the next and I can give you some ideas. So here's just a few ideas of ideas of what you would eat in a day on the mind diet. And again, very similar to Mediterranean diet oatmeal with fruit in the morning or a frittata with a little bit of cheese. You can still have things like cheese. It's just how much hard cheeses are generally better than soft ones. Um, and then whole grain toast. When I make a frittata, I what I'll usually do is to cut back. Egg yolks have a lot of really good nutrition in them, but instead of using all egg yolks, I'll use a few whole eggs and the rest of it egg whites. So I'm getting all my protein, but you know, cutting back a little bit on the fat, especially if you have to watch cholesterol. Um, non-fat unsweetened Greek yogurt, amazing. And you can do that with berries, nuts, cocoa nibs, which are really high in antioxidants, which is the raw cocoa bean roasted, not turned into chocolate yet, but tastes really chocolatey, it's delicious. Um, lunch, the dish that we're gonna make today is perfect. And in all honesty, in the summer, I eat it three or four times a week. I make a big batch and keep it in my fridge. Um, grilled chicken and veggie wrap, burrito bowls made with regular rice, cauliflower rice. And then dinner is, you know, really, if you want to make it simple, simple, grilled fish, grilled lean, any lean protein, vegetables, and a little bit of um, a whole, some sort of a whole grain. Alina, um, yeah. what, you said hard cheese. What, what types of cheeses do you think? And that's one of my weaknesses. What's, yeah, what kind of cheeses are, are the best? <laughs> Tends to be, I mean, really, if you're going for flavor and bang for your buck and, and the least amount of fat and most amount of flavor, things like Parmesan are great. Mm -hmm. I'd call that Parmesan Romano, I'd call that by Asiago. Um, and then for ones that are a little bit softer, actually um, mozzarella is good or string cheese. String cheese is great. It's already pre-portioned and you can cut it up in little chunks like for salads and stuff, because that's actually a slightly lower fat cheese. Mm -hmm. um, 
feta cheese generally is also, even though that's a soft cheese, that's a lower fat cheese, things like brie and camembert and stuff like that, blue cheese, those are the ones you want to use really sparingly, but they're strong. So you can get away with, you know, a half an ounce goes a long way. One slice of cheese right. goes, you know, goes a really long way if you spread it out and you're having it with your vegetables and other things and just using it as kind of your little extra. Wow. I would have never thought that about the string cheese. That's a great tip because those yeah. of us that are on the run. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's a really, it's a great little snack that gets you protein and yeah, it's not too high in fat. Other um, great snack ideas, nuts with dried cranberries, um, walnuts or almonds, especially um, fresh fruit and vegetables with hummus. Or one of my favorite things to do is you take non-fat Greek yogurt and it makes a really great dip. I mean, you can use it anywhere you use sour cream. Different brands are, you know, you may have your favorite. For me, Faye, I think, is the most kind of mild tasting. It's not super sour, so it's a really good replacement for um, sour cream. And you can use, you know, if you want to cheat, you can use a, a packet that's meant for dip, for regular sour cream dip. Use that non-fat Greek yogurt, and it's just all protein with flavor. Or you can put a bunch of fresh herbs in it and some lemon zest and some garlic, which... Um, I have a recipe that we can actually send everybody if you'd like to afterwards as part of our packet with this recipe that we're going to do today. Great. Um, smoothies, um, low sugar whole grain granola bars or protein bars are great. Hard boiled eggs. You can make, um, you know, there's, there's plenty of recipes out there like breakfast cookie type recipes. They call them breakfast cookies that are sweetened with apple juice or raw coconut sugar or things like that, natural sweeteners. You're really trying to stay away from the super refined sugars and white sugars. Let's see, we can go, yes, the next. So um, this is kind of the, the biggest takeaway is decreasing sweets, um, refined sugar, which they've done studies. Um, I've watched a few great documentaries on nutrition in the brain, and there's been some amazing studies about that sugar, which we can probably all identify with, is when they did tests with, um, like rats and mice, it's like cocaine. The way the addiction is, the way that they go back for sugar and they get addicted to it and the way they treat when they have sugar water. And that, literally, it was amazing to watch it. That's how your brain is wired. It really is an addiction. And it's super inflammatory to your entire system. So I love sugar as much as anybody, but I choose wisely when and where I have it. <laughs> um, so that's the main thing to avoid. And then, you know, red meat and your, your high fat dairy. So like at for a good example of kind of what a week might look like at Avita, we have um, a fish and a fish option pretty much every day. We have chicken almost every day, chicken or turkey, some sort of poultry. And then red meat is usually twice a week, sometimes once, once or twice a week. And then um, lean pork is usually once a week. Um, and then so, some vegetarian dishes here and there that have high protein. But so it's not that you have to cut meat out entirely. It's just, that's not kind of what you have all the time. And then on your plate too, that your protein is, you know, the size of your palm and we're doing lots of vegetables and lots of vegetables and fruit, it fills you up. You're getting all these things that you really need to be getting. And um, you can kind of have as much as you want. A really big plate is not gonna give you too many calories or fat or anything else you shouldn't be having. The things we're increasing by these foods that are um, a part of this diet are omega-3 as we discussed. Um, flavonoids, the anthocyanins, that, those are actually in. So what's interesting is that's the thing that's in red berries. that uh, has this really important um, antioxidant effect on the brain. It, it actually keeps or helps prevent um, plaques from being formed in the brain, which we all know is a part of Alzheimer's and dementia. So that's where the berries come in. Mangoes actually have that as well, which is why I love this salad. And you can, you know, put both in it. Vitamin E, folic acid, vitamin K, um, uh, lutein, and beta carotene. So again, you need to eat the rainbow, all the colors, and you'll have that color. Alina, can you just, what, what types of fish should you stay away from? Because I know there's some fish that, you know, I eat salmon three times a week, but yeah. I'm rare. <laughs> um, but I know, I think swordfish is a one that's a tough one. You're on mute. Whoop once we have it on at least once a week probably twice yeah sam is a superstar sardines are a superstar um there isn't really any that you shouldn't eat as far as fish goes um i'm not a huge fan of tilapia just because uh 99 of it's farm raised and farm raised in asia it's not very clean mm -hmm. um but if you like it it's still better than a lot of other things 
But really, it's again, it's not so much about what ones you shouldn't eat. It's really about which ones you should be eating. Mm -hmm. And for the mind diet, it really comes down to salmon, um, sardines, mackerel, which not a lot of people eat mackerel, but if you like pickled fish, mm -hmm. um, herring, um, tuna, albacore tuna, which that's a really easy one, I think, for most people to hit. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's one more that I'm forgetting. But really, those are your ones that are going to be at your highest in um, in the phrase. Okay. And there is a question from the chat room. What about the uh, mercury in, I always say that wrong, in the fish? Uh, I, the levels of it, I mean, I guess it depends where you're getting from. Unless you're eating, I mean, that, that's the heaviest, um, I believe, or had been really always like in tuna in certain fish. In um, salmon, I believe that's far less of an issue. Um so unless you're eating, I mean, you have to really be eating a ton of it. Okay. Have that be an issue that would outweigh the benefits of eating fish. There's mm -hmm. a lot of populations in the world. Again, the blue zone, Okinawa, Japan, like the places where people live to be the longest with the, you know, um, best brain function and everything else. And that's their whole diet and or like the, the majority of their diet. Mm -hmm. I think the really big thing with anything with any, any diet really in general is variety, is really trying to give yourself a variety, all of the things, things that you like and things that are good for you, but don't eat the exact same thing every day because you're not gonna get that variety of nutrients. And then also if something is, tends to be high and something you don't want, you're not gonna get as much of that either. Mm -hmm. Great. So we can go now, I'm gonna show you how to make this salad. So. This salad, like I said, I, I really do eat this probably four times a week in the summer. I make a big thing. And the great thing is it actually holds really well in the fridge. It's also super forgiving. So um, my original recipe was I created at this time of year because mangoes are in season. They start like in March, but even through now, different types of mangoes. Uh, and they're great this time of year. So I originally started it to be a mango and cucumber salad. And then realized as the summer went on and different things were in season that you can swap out peaches or nectarines really well for the mango. You can add, today I'm gonna add some blueberries to it. You could swap out pineapple. Um, it's very simple. There's no oil in it, so it has no fat. You honestly could eat the entire bowl by yourself, but I don't know many people that could do that one sitting because it makes a really large recipe. So it's real simple. We're gonna go and basically what your ingredients are is you have um, English cucumbers. You could use any cucumber you like. I'm a big fan of English cucumbers because they don't have as many seeds. And again, that lends to this salad holding up really well in the refrigerator for quite a while because it doesn't get all kind of wet and slimy. And you can leave the skin on them. So just wash them really well. A good substitute for that would be Persian, the little Persian cucumbers. But again, you can use any kind of cucumber you like. Then red peppers. Um, you can use orange or yellow if you don't have red. Like I said, really forgiving, but I like to use red. Mangoes, which these are the ones you guys are probably used to seeing, which are super common. And then there's these little guys here, which you'll see um, as honey mangoes or champagne mangoes, which are actually in season right now. They're a little bit different. They don't have quite as much um, flesh on them. And the texture is tends to be a little softer than these big guys. Um, people have their preferences. I really like both of them. I love these mangoes when if you get a really good, nice ripe one. And then we have um, the zest of a lime and some lime juice, herbs, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then some diced red onion. I already have my red onion in the bowl and I, then I'm gonna get on to everything else. Alina, so, can you tell us how you, I, I always have trouble finding the right mango. Like how do I know it's yes. right? So it's really, um, the best thing I can compare it to is finding a ripe avocado. That same way, which I know is also another challenge. Avocados, even when they feel good, sometimes it's like you cross your fingers every time you open one. Um, mangoes, it should, I mean, I, I don't know if it'll translate on camera at all, but it should have a little bit of give. Like this yeah. one has a little bit of give to it, but it's not mushy. Um, the bigger, if they get too soft, sometimes they'll be, and just like an avocado, Sometimes you can get one that just feels perfect and then you cut into it and it's not so great. It has some brown spots, or whatever inside and it's not the sweetest mango. Mm. That's just unfortunately the luck of the draw sometimes. This one, I don't know if you can tell, but this one is really not quite right yet. There were no big ones. 
that I could get that were really ripe. It's a lot firmer. Like when I push, it's barely giving to me at all. It really should give a little bit like, like a perfectly ripe avocado. Great. No, you could see the give in this smaller one. Yeah. Okay, good. So slicing mangoes, there's a few different ways, a few different tricks I'll show you. The first thing is in a mango, if you look at it this way versus this way, and then this way, you can see it's a little more narrow this way. The, that's how the pit runs. The pit runs all, it's got a huge pit in the middle that runs down it and it's flat. So you have to cut away from the pit on either side. You can't just cut into it like an apple or something. You can't cut it in half. If you have a really, really sharp knife, you can cut into the pit. Um, but most people don't have a knife like that and you, you really don't want to. So you just, you look at it and you see which way is the, the narrower way and that you know that that's the way the pit goes. And be careful, they can get a little bit um, slippery. But so I'm gonna go in and I just go carefully and I feel, so I can feel that I hit the pit right here. So I'm gonna go all the way around and then, oop, I hit it at the top. So I'm gonna come back out a little bit and then I just wiggle my knife around it. So I'm going as close to the pit as I can, coming all the way down. You can barely see, there's just a little bit of the pit showing through there, which is what you want. You don't want it to be, you can't really get it completely clean off of it. And then carefully, you're gonna go down the other side. Same thing, now I hit the pit at the top and I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my knife around it. And the other side came off like two halves. I hate to waste this. You can go, because of the shape of the pit is about here, there's probably a quarter of an inch around it of fruit, which you can peel it carefully and you can cut that fruit off this way and add it, and you'll feel it. They're all different. So like I hit the pit right there and I do, I can back out and go a little bit more. Or you just put this aside and save it and that's your snack for later because I hate to waste any fruit. So you like an apple core. That's great. I have literally butchered and done this wrong <laughs> my whole life. So <laughs> now that I know. <laughs> so then I'm just gonna cut this into chunks. And then when it comes to this part, so, I, a lot of the times, I'm a chef and I play with knives all day, would we'll just do this with a knife. It's a little bit dangerous. If you have a nice sharp peeler, that will work fine. Mm. And you can just peel. And you might ask like, why didn't I peel it before I sliced it? Way too slippery. You have such a risk of cutting yourself. If you peel it first and then try to slice it around the pit, it's just really hard. So I, I pull the sides off first and then I'll peel it. And then I'm gonna show you another little trick. That's great. That's a great tip whole peeling thing as well. Anyone that's been to Mexico will know what I'm about to do with the other one. And I'm so fascinated with, I know there's questions that I want to ask you and they're coming in, but I'm so fascinated. I don't want anybody to miss your tricks because I've already learned a number of things. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I think one of the questions that I, that, that we have is, you know, obviously you've stated early on the many benefits of the mind diet, but somebody who is trying to lose weight or to mm -hmm. tone, um, I mean, it's gotta be this, there's many different goals of the mind diet. And it just mm -hmm. seems to me like it is a, a common sense type of a diet. Any yeah. other questions? You, and you hundred percent. I mean, that comes down to the, it's, it's, very easy to do this diet if your goal is also weight management or weight loss because that really comes down to your calories in versus calories out so you just if i was gonna if i was doing that in all honesty i would um i'm not a big fan of super low carb but i'm a fan of moderate carbs so that you can still get your um and they've really shown that that's better for your overall inflammation and everything too so that you can get all your protein in and lots of fruits and vegetables so on my plate I get my you know, regular size serving of protein and then as much fruit and vegetables as I can in a smaller portion of my grains. And then that's a much, that's an easy way to still feel full and get in the nutrition you need to get in even if you're trying to watch your calories. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm gonna show you this other trick. So with this other half, instead of peeling it, I would say put it on the table, not in your hand. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut right into it, I'm feeling, you can use a paring knife if you're more comfortable with that. I'm cutting into it just until I hit the bottom skin, I'm not cutting through it. So I've cut lines all the way there. Then I'm gonna go in the other direction. 
Mm. And this is how, if you go to Mexico, some other South American countries, they serve this in the streets. They serve mangoes like this. So now I have that pattern mm. and I'm going to go like this. Oh, fabulous. And then with a little paring knife, you just cut them all off and it's already cut and you don't have to peel it. That's great. Now yeah. a question came in, Alina, what about um, any uh, thoughts on using frozen mango or? You can use frozen mango for the salad. Like I, I keep frozen mangoes in my um, freezer really for smoothies. <laughs> but mm. I love frozen fruit for smoothies because it makes them so nice and thick. But um, for the salad, you could use them. The downside would be, I mean, to me as a chef, I guess, the downside is textural because they're, they're gonna be a bit softer and for lack of a better word, slimier. Okay. Um, especially over time, especially if they're sitting, like if you're making a big batch and you wanna have it in your fridge for a couple of days, if you're making it one day and you're gonna eat it, especially if you're serving it like with a warm protein or something. Yeah, there's no um, harm in that. And uh, quite honestly, frozen um, fruit and vegetables is the next best thing to fresh. And in some cases is better than fresh because it's usually frozen really quick close to when it's harvested in the field. So the nutrition is, um, the nutrition is better than something that's like canned or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Right, so that's mango. And it would be the same with these, with these little guys. They're actually easier to see, right? That this way is fat and that way is the skinny way. And you're gonna cut down the skinny sides of it. Same thing works. So next I'm gonna do my cucumber. I like to keep everything pretty chunky. Again, for the reason I, it's all about texture. Um, I try to cut things relatively the same size. I don't have to be exact. So if my you know pieces of mango are like this, I'm gonna keep the cucumber pretty chunky. And again, if you're holding this in the fridge for a while, if you were to cut thin slices, they start to get kind of slimy and, and wet um, over time. Whereas if you cut nice big chunks, so I cut it in quarters oh. and I cut my quarters in chunks. Bite size. It's just going to hold up really well, like four or five days in the fridge, and it's still great. That's great. I'm, I'm going to play a total stickler for quality that way, for not having things deteriorate over time and wanting everything to really still taste as fresh when you have it two or three days later. And that this makes a difference. That's great. So we'll see afterwards. This, this is a big bowl. I'm making a pretty big bowl of salad here. And this whole bowl, talking about, if you're thinking about weight management, I mean, it's packed with nutrition, but the entire bowl is like 400 calories. It's four servings, which each serving is a good size serving is barely 100 calories mm -hmm. because it's all vegetables. So next we're gonna do the pepper. Lots of different ways to um, slice the pepper and clean up the insides. Personally, you can cut it in half and you know rip the stuff out. I like to waste as little as possible. So I actually set my pepper on my cutting board and I take my knife and once you get the first one off, you can see it, I cut right down the rib. So then the next one's easy because I can see where the rib is and I'm gonna cut right along it. So I'm just leaving the whole middle when I'm done. That's great. You know, Alina, you know, obviously this is a diet that's good for any age. Um, you know, my gosh, probably the younger you start, the better you're off, better off you are. Yep. But for somebody starting, um, it, it, you know, later, I mean, I'm in my late fifties, um, you know, any particular guidelines that you would advise or, um, goals to set? Um, no, I think it really, because it doesn't, it doesn't reverse any, you know, like I said, it doesn't reverse anything, but it will slow things down and, um, and or prevent. And really, I guess, if you were starting older, I would say be more aggressive. So be a little bit stricter about the amount of refined sugar in sweets, maybe a little bit stricter about the amount of red meat, um, just because, you know, like that study showed that if you were really conscious and adhered to it closely, you know, it was a 54% um, decrease, whereas moderately was 35%. So I think if you're right. starting older, you want to try to get the biggest decrease you can because you don't have as many years to spread it out over. Right. No, I think that makes sense. Um, absolutely. And so since you've been in, how long have you been at Avita? I have been at Avita um, almost a year and a half. I started about a month before COVID. 
Oh, God, love you. <laughs> and so, um, and you started introducing the mind diet right away, or was that over a period? Um, after a few months, you know, after getting acclimated and um, everything, after about a few months, I started to slowly, you know, transition things over. And now, the last two sets of menus I've done, as it turns out, um, we have a terrific, um, you know, I've, everybody may not know this, but in assisted living and long-term care, we're mandated by the state to have um, nutritionists that specialize in nutrition for aging um, approve our menus every time we change a menu. And um, we're really lucky that the nutritionist that we have actually, which I didn't know, um, knows a lot about the mind diet and specializes in it. And when I turned in my, my uh, fall menus to her, she, I didn't say anything about the mind diet to her. And she said, wow, these menus really fit the mind diet. Do you know about the mind diet? And I said, well, that's good because that was my goal. So. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, so we've that's managed fabulous. to really get it. Yeah, we've managed to get it now. So it's um, pretty closely adheres to it. I'd say that the difference is um, where we're not super strict is we probably have a little bit more sweets because we're not going to deny people what they want. They love their sweets. But we try to be really creative about um, we do a lot of fruit-based desserts, a lot of sorbet, everybody likes their sorbet. Um, and we try to mix in, you know, almost alternate healthy desserts with just the fun ones that everybody loves. Great. And have you noticed, um, you know, the benefits of, with the residents of this mind diet for those well, that are really embracing it? Uh, definitely a reason raising it. We've noticed, um, we've heard from family members um, that people have noticed a difference. They've noticed a difference in how the residents are eating, um, how much they're eating. Um, so that's been really great to see people notice the changes and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, without having a you know real scientific study, it's going to be hard to know as far as um, the real like measurable medical benefits because we're dealing with a population that has all kinds of other you know ailments and stuff and people that are already um you know have dementia so we're not in the prevention we're in the let's slow it down as much as we can which i'd like to think i'd like to think we're doing and we've managed to keep it i will say probably a fringe benefit is we really managed to keep our community very healthy over the last year of dealing with covid we had mm -hmm. um yeah, we were really lucky and managed to keep everybody really healthy. And I'd like to think that their nutrition was somehow part of that. Sure. And what herb are you, I can't tell if that's basil or cilantro. So th this actually is mint. Oh, and okay. um, the, that's one of the fun things with this recipe. So I love cilantro. Not everybody does. I love cilantro and mint together, which is very commonly used actually in a lot of um, Asian countries, those two um, things together, in Indian and Southeast Asian. So I like to put in this salad, I like to put some fresh mint chopped up and lots of fresh cilantro, but you can really do whatever you want with it. So if you like basil, basil and mint are also great together. Uh, basil and cilantro work together. You can just pick one, but kind of whatever you like. But the fresh herbs add just a little, another layer of kind of flavor and freshness. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is zest a lime. These limes are really tiny. <laughs> Um, one or two, I probably normally would do, um, two of this size. I'm just going to do one because I already juiced them. And then, um, two tablespoons of lime juice, which goes into our dressing, which is approximately when they were this little, we'll see, I juiced it. We'll measure it out and see, but I think it's going to be pretty close to two limes when they're small. It's not really about the size though, as most of you guys know, a lot of times you get a lime and you open it, they're just dry. You don't get a lot of juice from the lime. A lot of times you, you're just gonna get a tablespoon even from a big one. So I would say to have a few limes on hand. Um, could you use bottled lime juice? Yes, but in my opinion, why would you? <laughs> the fresh <laughs> stuff just tastes so much better. And the zest again, just gives you a little bit more of this kind of herbaceous floral like lime punch. So to zest it, I have, a handy microplane. This is really my favorite thing for zesting. Um, if you didn't have one and you wanted to put some of the zest in it, you could really carefully with a peeler, peel off a thin, you wanna to try to avoid the pith, the white part, that's what's bitter. You could peel this and then um, uh, chop it really, really small. Someone just asked, how do you uh, pick a good lime? So I, again, kind of like the uh, mango, I grab it and I, feel again I want it to have some give mm -hmm. sometimes the skin's really thick it's hard to tell 
but usually when they have no give and the skin's really thick, they're dry inside and you're not going to get a lot of juice out of them. So I try to pick one where the skin is um, smooth and feels a little bit thinner and I, it has some give to it. That's then right. another great tip for any citrus when you're going to juice it, there's two things you can do. One, always roll it on your counter first. Hmm. So you, you put your hand on top of it and really put some pressure into it and roll it. What that does is it breaks up. If you, I'll show you when we cut into it. If you look at um, citrus, there are little tiny saps all put together that hold the juice. And this just kind of helps to start to break those up and makes it a lot easier to juice. If you have a really tough one, you can throw it in the microwave for 20 or 30 seconds and that helps too, softens it up. Huh. And I know I can see that a family member, it must be a family member is asking if Alina can share these recipes with our other Avita communities. And I, I know that Alina would be happy to share these with the other culinary directors um, at our other communities, so. Absolutely. So that's, I mean, you can see, see the little, what I was talking about with those little sacks there. Um, so I actually should have zested it before I cut it to make my job a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. So with the zester, so a lot of times it's funny, you'll see people doing this when they zest, almost always, I mean, I did for years, you hold this over whatever bowl you're going to and you zest. And you're trying not to get to the white part and you're trying to get the whole thing clean, but you can't see what you're doing. So one day, probably 15 years ago, I realized if I flip it the other way, it works a lot better. <laughs> thought, Why doesn't everybody learn how to do it that way? So I hold it upside down and the zest will collect in the top and then you can just tap it out. Oh, that's great. So you just go all the way around. It would be easier if it was whole, but I got carried away and cut it in half to show you. <laughs> I was distracting you. <laughs> still works it's just making a little extra work for myself and we appreciate you inviting us into your kitchen by the way <laughs> Happy to. it's a little noisy in the kitchen at Evita with the fans and everything else right. the kitchens are not the quietest place all right so I have my lines that's in there then the last things I'm going to add are um, the herbs, and I'm actually going to add some blueberries to this one, but I'm going to make the dressing first, and then we'll add the finishing touches. So for the dressing, dressing is um, a few tablespoons of lime juice. So like I said, this was two small limes. We'll see what we get out of it. That one. Yeah, that was maybe two and a half to three from two limes. So you're probably gonna want two limes. And then to that, I'm gonna add um, a teaspoon of either honey or raw coconut sugar. And if you've never used or seen or tasted raw coconut sugar, it's from um, basically drying out the juice from like juicing a coconut. And it looks a lot like brown sugar. It's more powdery. It tastes, there's a very caramelly kind of brown sugar taste to it. It works great in baking. You literally can substitute. So like if you wanted to make an oatmeal cookie that was healthier and more mind diet compliant, you could replace the sugar in your oatmeal cookie recipe with coconut sugar and it tastes great. It's a little bit earthy, a little more molassesy, but it's great and it doesn't change the texture, which um, is a big problem with a lot of recipes when you try and replace sugar with some sort of sugar replacement is it messes up the texture. So and coconut sugar is a real favorite of mine. And you can just buy that. I've never bought coconut sugar. You can. Now, because overall people are becoming so much more health conscious and with paleo and all these other diets, you can find raw coconut sugar. Uh, Mata Hava is a great brand, but you can find it. Almost every supermarket has it now. Sometimes it's where the natural food section or the gluten-free or paleo stuff is. But in most supermarkets now, I see it where all the other sugars are. You can find it on um, Amazon, Trader Joe's has it, Whole Foods has it, but Stop and Shop and all those stores have it too. And it has a, of all the um, natural sugars, it has a very low glycemic index, which means that um, the glycemic index is how quickly uh, the sugars affect your blood, your blood sugar levels. And with white sugars, like a hundred, um, coconut sugar is less than 50. Um, I think it's around 30 something. Maple syrup and honey are pretty good too. And the other thing about things like coconut sugar, maple syrup and honey is they have other nutrition to them. So it's not just empty sugar calories. 
Hmm. So I'm going to use a teaspoon of this. It actually dissolves even easier than sugar. Um, you could, but you could use honey if you like the flavor of honey. Then the other thing I'm going to add is a tablespoon of rice vinegar, which again, it's um, an Asian ingredient, but you can buy this in every supermarket now. There's two different ones. You're going to see this one says sodium free, sugar free. Then there's seasoned rice vinegar which is delicious, but has a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar in it. Not enough that I think it's really an issue unless you um, need to be on a low sodium diet and are watching that. But if you were gonna use that, you could probably cut out the other sweetener or cut it back. Hmm. So I'm just gonna add one teaspoon of that, a uh, tablespoon, sorry. If you don't have rice vinegar, you can substitute apple cider vinegar and it's delicious. That's hmm. it. It's really simple, there's no oil. So I'm just gonna mix this all until the coconut sugar dissolves. Um, obviously honey, you don't have to worry about that. You don't mix right in. And I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, that's optional. But when I say a pinch, really just a little, it's not even a quarter teaspoon. Um, I like kosher salt because it's easier to control the amount if the flakes are bigger or a large flake sea salt. Mm -hmm. And salt just kind of brings out the flavor and everything keeps things from tasting flat. People, you know, ask about salt or worry about salt and cooking in your diet. The big thing, the reason that um, so many Americans, especially, have issues with sodium or really have to watch your sodium is all the packaged food. It's hidden and sometimes not even hidden. So much in prepackaged and pre-made food. If you're cooking everything from scratch, using a little bit of salt or sea salt in your cooking as seasoning is you're not going to be over what the recommended daily limits are, even if you're supposed to be watching yourself, it really comes down to um, labels on things that are prepackaged, even bread and things like that. And Alina, what about things like, I mean, we talked about dairy products, such as the, the hard cheeses and the ones that you went over and obviously yogurt. What about things like milk and cream and, you know, what's your thoughts on that? So see, the same thing kind of with that is that you, um, want to limit it. I personally, um, I eat dairy. Most of my dairy comes from Greek yogurt. For milk, um, I use low fat milk and at um, out of either we use low fat milk. But then I also use personally, and I think is great with the Mind Diet, um, not milks. My favorite is cashew or cashew almond mixture. And um, they are lower in um, calories than regular milk. And then you also have the added benefit of it's not milk. So you're getting some of the added nutrition to it um, and you don't have to worry about cholesterol. So I like to use not milk for cooking. You can't tell if you're doing a savory recipe, cashew milk is great. It's very creamy and, and close to uh, regular milk for making like cream sauce or something. Um, and almond milk, I, I like the unsweetened vanilla. It's really good in cereal and stuff. I love it in my coffee. I'll use, a little trick I do is I'll use a tiny bit of half and half of cream and then also with some almond milk to cut it so I don't need as much of the cream. Good trick, good tip. And <laughs> one of the um, uh, guests is asking if we'll be getting the recipes. We are, as a follow-up, gonna be um, sending you uh, the recipes. So not to worry. If for some reason you don't think we have your email address uh, accurately. Just use the chat um, uh, button and just put in your email address. We'll be sure to get it to you. Yeah, we'll send this recipe and then I have a few others that we can include as well. Um, so I'm just adding my mint on top and some cilantro. A great trick for getting uh, nuts in your diet, and we um, we do this at Avita. And my staff was a little skeptical at first, but it's amazing. It's so much more amazing than it sounds. And another recipe that we can include is when you're making um, meatballs, especially uh, turkey meatballs or like extra extra lean ground beef. You're you're missing some of the fat anyway, which is what makes them um, soft and moist and not like really dried out. So what I do is I take raw cashews and soak them in water to soften them. We blend them and we make that into a paste, the same thickness and the same type of paste that you would make from traditionally using bread or breadcrumbs and milk. And you add that, you cannot tell, you cannot taste it. Um, there's no pieces because we make it a really fine puree and it gives them the, the best texture. And then you have the added benefit of the omega-3s and the healthy fats. Wow, what a great tip that is. Yeah, it's delicious. I mean, you really, you have to taste it to believe it because you think, 
you know, the old like 70s nut loaf and all these other things, right? Like, veggie burgers, you think you're going to taste them. You, you cannot tell they're in there. You cannot tell that they were, are not a traditional meatball. And so you just put them in the fruit processor. Is that what you said? Yeah, I take the cashews and I soak them up. We will put them in a pot with enough water just to cover them and bring it to a boil and then shut it off. Let them sit for like 20 minutes. They get soft and they kind of pop up. They suck up some of the water and then you can blend them in a food processor until they make a really smooth puree. And we'll usually add like our garlic and herbs to that and then mix that into the meat mixture the same way that you would if you were doing breadcrumbs. So, yeah, one of my favorites. So I have my dressing. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's really enough because we're just lightly coating it. It's super flavorful because it's got all that acid from the vinegar and the lime juice. So I'm gonna add blueberries to this. So when you get the recipe, you'll see the recipe is this original first part that I did, which is your mangoes. Um, red onion, which I didn't chop, but I had already had in here. You can use shallot or sweet white onion if you want. And um, the mango, cucumber, pepper. But you can add into it blueberries. It can be delicious with this, with the mango and the um, cucumbers. You could just do all blueberries if you wanted to. Mm. Those on. And then I'm just going to drizzle over my dressing. I have to say my mouth is watering. <laughs> this bowl is a bit too small, so I'm going to have to mix carefully. But then I'm just going to mix until everything's really well coated. And look at how pretty that is. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, how do you not want to eat that? Because it's so oh, beautiful. Oh, in the summer, it's so refreshing. And it's, like I said, it's lunch a few times a week at least. So then from here, you can also, another thing is if you, wanted to cut this all smaller you could make it into almost like a salsa which you could use as a snack with chips or something or you could use it as a topping on fish or pork or chicken if you wanted to use it like on a top of warm you know cooked fish or something i like to take it and take a plate just to bump up our brain health here and do a bit of spinach or whatever baby greens you like um, I love, and we use it to be the little leaf lettuce, which if you're in New England, you can get in almost every supermarket now. It's amazing. It's locally grown in Devon's Mass. And it is, you think that there's not a difference with lettuce and you think I'm kidding until you try it. It is the best lettuce you will ever have and you won't want to eat any other lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's dark. So it, it gives you the dark um, leafy green benefits because it's uh, green leaf and red leaf lettuce, but it has the crunch and texture of iceberg. So it doesn't like break down or get soggy in a salad. It's amazing. So you can do a bit of that or a bit of spinach and then just gonna put this right on top. That looks amazing. And I have not, see how big that plate is? I haven't even taken a quarter of this yet. And wow. a quarter of this is one serving. When you get the recipe, um, it has all the nutrition info on it and you'll see a quarter of it. It's got, yeah, all the colors of the rainbow. Just that is pretty filling, but then for your protein, I like to do, um, I really love it in the summer with cold protein. So I'll grill ahead of time, chicken or salmon or poached salmon, um, even pork, like a lean piece of like pork loin or tenderloin and grill that and then chill it and serve it sliced on the salad. You could also do lean steak and it just makes a really nice like meal of a salad. Beautiful. Well, this, yeah. Amazing. That looks so good. So delicious, yeah. You can yes, love it. Look at that, gorgeous. Yeah, that's a big plate of food. It sure is. You add a piece of salmon to grilled salmon to that, and I'm in my glory. You're, you're full, and that is yeah, and that's a meal that is nutritious, but also if if you are weight conscious or anything, it's you can eat that whole thing and not think twice about. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And what got you? What you start? What you said you you started doing the mind diet when? Really, after I started at Avita, because um, I was fortunate enough to be raised in a family where really, we, could you add avocados? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I had to stop when I saw that question. Yeah, I, I know. I, was, well, I, was, I yeah. add them to everything. Healthy fat. Avocados are amazing. Yes. It would be delicious with avocado. Um, and a little bit more filling from the fat. And, but with the lime juice and avocado is one of my favorite things. So this dressing would be great. But yeah, I started looking into the mind diet really after I started at Avita because as I was saying, I was really fortunate to be raised in a family where we were taught that food is medicine and what you eat is really important. Um, 
and um, that diet, you know, can affect your overall health. And I saw it, I will have to say that um, I knew all of my great grandparents. They all lived into their 90s. All my grandparents lived into their 90s. And I think a lot of that is because of the way that everyone in my family has, has eaten and watched their health over the years. So I was very fortunate in that. And I'd like to share that with other people. When I started Evita, I just started thinking, you know what, I got curious, like what's the connection between food and uh, brain health. And so I started researching it. I found some great documentaries, which off the top of my head, there's two of them and I can't even remember the exact names of them. But if people are interested, I can give them to you, Mel, and you can um, send those to people that were just really great documentaries that talked about studies and research that's been done on um, how the food we eat, sugar and other things affects brain health. And then um, through that research, I stumbled across the mind diet and the studies that led to the development of it. And there's quite a few different books and cookbooks out there. So I just started reading and realized it's, I've always kind of followed the Mediterranean diet, but this is so similar that it would just be so easy to implement. And it 100% fits what we do at Evita with eat fresh, eat local, because it's really what it's based on is fresh food. And of course, the more local your food is, the more nutritious it is. Most Absolutely. Of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One person, Alina, is asking, and I don't own an air fryer, so I know nothing mm -hmm. about them. Um, no. What do you think about air fryers versus grilling? Um, I like both. I have an air fryer. Um, I've got mine actually just this year. I'm a huge fan of grilling. I just love grilling because I love the flavor that it adds to things. But air frying is... Um, Health-wise, I think they're equal. Um, you don't need to add a lot of fat, if any, when you air fry, and it really does get great results. Like chicken and salmon are both amazing in the air fryer. They're, it's it's very easy, it's a quick, both of those are around 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it does give you that, very similar to grill as far as your texture and stuff, because it gives you that nice um, kind of browning in, on the outside and keeps everything still really moist on the inside. Hmm. So to me, they're pretty equal. Okay, good to know. Now, when you indulge in something that's not good for you, what, what is it? Chocolate. Okay. <laughs> no, it's no. dark well, chocolate. Dark chocolate is good chocolate. for you. Dark chocolate is good for you. Probably my, my, this always disappoints people because I'm a chef and what my favorite dessert or whatever is, I love ice cream. Mm. That's probably my favorite, which is something I share with most of our residents. I think a lot of people <laughs> like ice cream. I don't know, maybe because it reminds us of being a kid. I don't know, but um, ice cream, a big one. Um, Cheese, like you said, like full fat dairy cheese, if I'm going to indulge. But if I'm going to indulge, like I, that's another thing I always say is, you know, eat consciously and indulge consciously. So if you're eating good 90% of the time, when you do decide to have something that is, you know, not as good for you, make a count, have a really good piece of really good French cheese or a really good piece of chocolate cake. You don't need to have as much. You can have it smaller, which is kind of the way French people eat. Or, you know, just make it good and make it count. Don't right. waste on junk. Don't waste your sugar on Twinkies. If you're going to have sugar, have a really nice brownie or cookie. Or That's something. a great analogy. <laughs> and I would agree. <laughs> well, one other, one last little thing I wanted yep. to mention is something that I actually just read um, when I was reading stuff, it, preparing for this, and I was rereading some My Diet stuff. The red wine piece, so we all know it's the, you know, there's components and antioxidants in red wine that um, are good for heart health. It has to actually do with raising your, um, as do the berries, of raising your good cholesterol, lowering your bad cholesterol. But one of the other things that one of the first um, doctor scientists who studies brain health and was advocating for drinking red wine, one of the things that he said that I thought was fascinating is that drinking a glass of wine cognitively stimulates you more than almost any other activity you can do because of the different um, layers of flavors and smells and texture you can get and memories and all these other things that it triggers that he thinks that that alone is a benefit on its own aside from the nutritional benefit, which I thought was really fascinating. Well, I think that just about everybody watching this tonight has benefited by so many of your tips but they're all going to be going for that glass of wine right after this <laughs> i think that's great alina you, drink, you can work it in like it, we don't obviously we're not serving red wine to everybody to eat every day um we cook with it so if you if you're not going to drink it then cook with it we'll breeze when we do do red meat we'll we'll breeze it in red wine or we'll you know put it in a sauce we poach pears in it which is great dessert 
Ooh, that sounds delicious. That's wonderful. Any any last minute tips for us? I think that's it. Just, I mean, I really think um, when you, I guess my, my big takeaway would be if you're, you know, when you attack, attack the brain diet, when you are thinking about implementing the mind diet, which I really think everybody should do, it's not hard, is focus more on what you should be having than what you shouldn't, because that makes it so much easier, I think when people focus so much on what you're not supposed to have on a diet that's the part that we hate about it that's the restrictiveness and what I can't have this and I can't have that if you just worry about what you need to have you're going to fill your plate and fill your stomach before you even worry about the stuff that you shouldn't be having and want if you're trying to get in all the good stuff you'll be happy and full just after you eat all the good stuff right well that's that's great advice Alina and like I said I mean first of all whether we've been in a pandemic or not, this is great information. The mind diet seems to make perfect sense. I, for one, have been on just about every diet under the sun. This just seems just so, as I said, logical. Um, and the fact that it really does focus, and I think your point is, is, I hope everybody got this loud and clear, that this is for the mind. And if we can keep our mind healthy, that in and of itself is going to keep the rest of us healthy. So um, we are so lucky to have you as one of our culinary directors and so grateful to have you um, teach us some of your wonderful tips um, this evening. Um, for those of you that have joined us tonight, I thank you so much. I hope you got as much out of it as I did. Um, and we really appreciate, like I said at the beginning, your time, but most importantly, we hope that these three programs that we had gave you um, some time for yourself, got you to reflect on taking care of yourself as well as taking care of the people you need to. And for our associates and our directors that might have gotten on, this is for you as well. You've worked so incredibly hard. You deserve this to take care of yourself. We all owe it to ourselves to take care of ourselves. So this is wonderful, wonderful advice. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Enjoy the sunshine and enjoy life getting back to a little bit more normalness for all of us. So enjoy and be well. Thank you. Bye.